to high profile United Nations agencies, WHO, that is the World Health Organization, and UNHRC, or the United Nations Human Rights Council, very often function as bitter, hostile forces opposed to India, rather than as worldwide regulatory bodies tasked with doing good in the world. I'm not the one saying it, but their track record does. If there were any doubts on the veracity of the statement, take out the track record of WHO during these last two or three years during the time when the world faced the worst of the COVID pandemic and hold up that track record for scrutiny. And if there were any doubts that the UNHRC is a biased body, then see the manner they function on all kinds of issues ranging from Kashmir to Ukraine. Hi and welcome all to the CAA show. CAA, as all of you know, is conversations and analysis and my name is Jaggi Basi. To join our show, press the big red subscriber button on your screen. Subscription is of course completely free. Now before I give you specific examples of the bias of these agencies, we must first understand what kind of people and more important, what kind of interests worm their way in these agencies. First, let me clarify that the original mandate of these agencies is spot on. After all, who can dispute the need for a worldwide body that streamlines remedies and therapeutics and vaccine supply to bring relief to the world? A body that oversees, as it were, the physical health of citizenry, especially those from less than affluent countries. Similarly, the human rights of world citizenry or the lack of it in some quarters is an issue that cannot be wished away. The real question then is, what kind of people are calling the shots in these agencies? And without any doubt, these bodies are back to the gills with left liberals who are filling these bodies with an activist political agenda of other interests, other people and countries that are not very well disposed towards India. Take the current heads of WHO and UNHRC. The WHO is headed by a gentleman by the name of Tedros, Dr. Tedros Adnahom Ghebreyes. Dr. Tedros, or Tedros as I am going to call him, is not a practicing doctor. He is in fact not even a doctor. He is a doctor of philosophy in community health from the University of Nottingham. Someone who in India we would call a Vela who has done a Fatru course. More interestingly, this so-called Dr. Tedros was once part of a coalition called the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, which successfully overthrew the government of Hail Miriam. A person of this kind of background is heading the WHO. Shocking, isn't it? And how did such a person come to occupy this exalted position? The world knows that Tedros dances to the tune of the Chinese. During the entire COVID period, Tedros gave the benefit of doubt to the Chinese regarding the controversy over the origin of the virus in China. It was under Tedros that the Chinese vaccines made by the company Sinopharm were cleared in double quick time when first introduced. No one bothered to check whether these vaccines were effective or not. Look at how COVID is now rapidly spreading in China and how these vaccines have proven to be duds. But not a squeak against those vaccines in WHO. And compare that with how the WHO has treated our indigenous effort Covaxin. At all junctures, hurdles were put in the way of its acceptance by WHO. The case of the COVID death count toll in India by the WHO by now is too well known to show the bias of the WHO. We all know that they have used faulty data collection methodology and drawing room models to inflate India's death toll from some 4 million to 48 million dead. If the dubiousness of this exercise was not sufficient, they added insult to injury by pressing into service for their fraud exercise. Indian origin, and if I may say so, Indian beta epidemiologists like US-based Dr. Ramanan Narayanan, 
who has been gleefully defending the WHO exercise in all channels. And why is he doing that? Because around the first COVID wave, the same man used similar models, had said that more than 60% of Indians would be infected from COVID and hundreds and thousands would die and bodies would be littering the streets. Nothing of that sort happened in the first wave. And so, when the same doctor pressed into service by WHO to tabulate the dead toll, numbers wanted to prove a point and he used a spike during the second Delta wave to contribute and defend these farcical dead toll numbers. Takes an Indian to be low, especially about other Indians. And now the UNHRC, its head, Michelle Bachelet, is the former president of Chile. For the last many years, Michelle has been constantly criticizing India over Kashmir, the CAA legislation and the Kisan stir. In her pronouncements and attitude, she finds no difference between the excesses of the Pinochet regime in a native country, Chile, and India. Clearly, she is traumatized by her country's past. But is it tenable and fair that a person with such a mindset sees demons where none exist and goes after perfectly functioning democracies like India? The short point of this episode is that these two bodies have become the playground of pharma multinationals cut up with India, of radicals who have agendas set in some Western capitals and even in extremist Islamic groups. Politics, more than health and human rights, dictates the agenda of these two bodies. In a sense, by constant interference in India's internal affairs and questioning the efficacy and reliability of India's giant and very well-functioning pharma industry, these UN bodies have in a sense started to function like a bitter opposition party in India opposed to the Modi government. And in this entire mess, the government also has to take the blame for reposing so much faith in these bodies. What, for instance, was the need for the government to lay out the red carpet for Tedros when he came to India last month on a visit? We still desperately seek approval from these UN bodies and these bodies know our weakness and they thoroughly exploit it. When we talk of Atma Nirva Bharat, should we mean Atma Nirbhar only in manufacturing and not extend the meaning of the term in managing our expectations and the need for approval from characters such as Tedros and Michelle Bachelet. And so on this note, I come to the end of this episode of the CAA show. I hope you really enjoyed this particular episode. If you like our show, subscribe to us. And on this note, it's goodbye and cheers from my end.